Titans, we haven't seen you since last year. <clears throat> Today is Thursday, January 13th, and you're watching Senta News. I'm Pranit. And I'm Brody. So, Pranit, it's a new year. Do you have any resolutions you've been trying to achieve? I want to see Spider-Man again. Well, yeah, naturally, if you're a real fan, you saw it multiple times in the theaters. Um, but I was thinking something more along the lines of what our Titans have been up to for their resolutions. Yeah, I guess we can go on that one. Here's Lauren with some of the New Year's resolutions Titans have planned. 2021 was a rough year to say the least. This year, our students at Centennial High School have resolutions for a fresh start to a new year. My New Year's resolution is to become a better basketball player and to hit more threes. <laughs> to be a brick. My New Year's resolution was to probably like not watch as much TV because like I spend like eight hours a day just watching TV. New Year's resolution. To get into a good college. My New Year's resolution is to eat more lunchroom food because it's so good. My New Year's resolution is um, I want to be able to give to charity every single month. Honestly, to lose weight. These resolutions will surely start off this year on a good first step. This is Lauren, Sun 10 News. I'm glad to see so many people making an effort to make 2022 a great year. I'd give it a week. Dude, have some faith in our community. I mean, look, the Cowboys, they're going to the playoffs, but that's not the only great thing they're doing in our community. One of our very own teachers, Ms. Shannon Holloman, won the Cowboys Class Act Award. That's great. What is that? Well, let's hand it over to Owen and find out. The Dallas Cowboys recently teamed up with Reliant Energy to celebrate teachers who impact students' lives across North Texas. On Tuesday, December 14th, our very own Ms. Shannon Holloman received the Cowboys Class Act. I was totally overwhelmed and shocked. Um, I mostly was standing there going, my heart is racing out of my chest and I don't know what's happening right now. There's all these people. Because literally there was a room full of people I didn't know who they were. And I kind of just kept looking over at Dr. Zambezi like, are you sure? Are you sure it's me? Is this really real? kind of thing because yeah I was completely overwhelmed still still am when I think about it um, I try to make sure that my classes are student-centered a lot of student choice make sure that they are kind of taking ownership um, anatomy and physiology I mean those kids are learning about their bodies and what makes them work and a lot of them are going on to look at future careers in the medical field. So it's really a lot of, I can provide you the resources, but I can't learn the structures and functions for you. So you kind of have to do that for yourself. So I just provide them all the types of activities and manipulatives that they can do that with. Um, biology, they kind of have to be here, but I still like for them to explore and get hands-on and again, student-centered where they're engaged in what they're doing. I, I mean, I have money to spend for my classroom, so it's going to be physical impact and hopefully get some good resources that my kids can use. So hopefully that's going to be a positive influence in that way. Um, I think just awareness of, you know, what we're doing and the, the it's not just me, it's a community and, and all of us together, all of the teachers here. Any one of us could have easily won this award and deserve it equally. So I think it's just the uh, nice to be recognized. Thank you, like literally from the bottom of my heart, thank you, I, I'm blown away still, overwhelmed by the generosity and kindness and, the, and things that you had to say, and I appreciate it very much. This has been Owen Davis with Sen10 News. Well, that's just sweet. Congratulations, Miss Holloman, for the award. Man, all this talk about the Cowboys and sports has really made me curious about what our own sports teams have been up to. Here's Hope with our Centennial Sports Update. The Centennial Wrestling team has been working extremely hard this season and winning lots. They have a lot to look forward to for the rest of the season and the wins that are to come. Some future dates include Varsity Boys and Girls having a duel at Lebanon Trail on the 20th. On the 22nd, there are some state duels or JAG invite for Varsity Guys. The Varsity Girls also have a Coyote Classic on the 22nd. 
The district state duels possibly on the 27th for both varsity boys and girls. JV district championships on the 29th. District championships for both varsity boys and girls on the f on February 4th and 5th. And regionals following that the next weekend and after that. States championships for both varsity boys and girls. This is Hope Elliott with Sun 10 News. Well, here's to hoping for a fantastic 2022 sports season. Mm. Oh, by the way, did you hear about the uh, social media threats that happened before break? Actually, yeah, I did hear about those, but I don't really know a whole lot. Well, here's Andrew with the update. Before our Titans went on winter break, there was an issue that arose regarding threats made on social media that FISD had to respond to. While this event has since passed, school safety is always a concern on the minds of students and staff. And it's important to know how our campus responds to threats like these. In every case, threats made against FISD schools are taken as serious and never as a joke, even if they were not intended to be serious. This means that there are very real consequences for making any type of threat on social media that you should be aware of. Officer Jones will tell us how these threats are handled. My name is Officer Avery Jones, Frisco Police Department, the SRO at Centennial High School, Frisco, Texas. We act to any type of threat as, as if it's something that's imminent and we're gonna investigate it to the fullest length. Anytime you make a threat about doing something or causing harm at a school or to someone in a school, it's considered not to be a joke, okay? And if a person does that, they can get a felony or they can get a misdemeanor, a class A misdemeanor charge against them, which can be severe consequences. Now, if you're 16 and below, you're probably going to get arrested and taken to jury. If you're 17 and above, you're going to get arrested and taken to jail. Okay, because we never consider it a joke. We take every threat as if, some, as if the individual means it and is going to do it. If you do see a threat on social media, there are ways that you can act to keep our school safe. This includes taking a photo with a friend's camera, not sharing the threat any further, and reporting the incident to Centennial staff. The first thing is react. If you have someone that, that's there with you that has a phone that can take a picture of it so that the individual doesn't know that you're screenshotting it or saving it, have them do that. Whatever you do, do not pass it along. Do not resnap it. Do not send it to other people. Do not post it to your story. Do, don't, do, do not do any of that thing. Do it. Get it. Give it to an adult so we can get it to the police and so we can contact the individual that's making these type of threats and deal with it. But whatever you do, don't pass it along and become part of the problem. The best thing to do is report these incidents. If you have a friend or someone that decided they think it's funny, you need to tell them it's not funny. You know, it can be serious consequences and don't do it. And don't search for these type of stories. You know, sometimes we get threats and they say it's a threat here and it's actually a Centennial High School in another state. Because somebody's doing a search, they find it, and then they send it back out. The bottom line is that threats are very seriously, and each and every individual that makes those threats do face very serious consequences. It's never considered a joke. It's all fun and games until somebody calls the police, but those, these threats are not a joke. Remember that every one of us shares the responsibility of keeping our campus safe. And if you see a threat on social media, be sure to report it. With the help of students and staff, we can ensure that everyone here feels safe. This has been Andrew Jones with Sen10 News. Thanks for your insight, Andrew. Man, I can't imagine how stressed out people have to be with these kinds of concerns. Dude, you're telling me. I'm worried about my college apps. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you have any left you gotta finish? No, I'm just running the letters now, but... Well, I bet you a lot of other people feel the same way. In fact, here's Xander to help us out with the college application process. Rising seniors, you might want to pay attention. The college application process is something most seniors here at Centennial have become very familiar with over the past few months. And while many have theirs completed and submitted at this point in the year, there are still many yet to embark on this life-changing journey. For those still working on applications, or for next year's class of 2023, there is a lot to know about college apps that will hopefully make the process a little less stressful when it comes time to do so. To start with, you want to do your research. You want to decide what colleges, majors, and programs you're going to be interested in after high school. Depending on how competitive you'll be applying for, the number of schools may vary, but you want an even mix of targets, safeties, and reaches when you apply. 
Once you send your application to these schools, you will be met with their application portals. Each school's portal is slightly different, but a lot of them have the same principles. They'll give you a unique login, and then you'll use that to view your application status throughout the year. Of course, no college app would be complete without red letters. When getting these, you'll want to be very courteous to who you ask. Don't wait till the last minute to get those red letters. Throughout the college application process, you will also be writing lots of essays. Review them if you need, and make sure you take lots of time to go over and write them. After the process is done, be on the lookout for financial aid and scholarship opportunities. They will help you tremendously. It's no secret that many students get overwhelmed from this whole process, and that's okay. If you ever have any questions or concerns about the college application, do not hesitate to get in touch with your guidance counselor. As many decisions come out over the next few weeks and more application deadlines approach, I wish you good luck, seniors. This has been Xander Sant for Sent 10 News. Man, I hope Peter Parker got that MIT. Who's Peter Parker? Anyway, not everyone is going to college next year. That's right, a lot of students are still going to be at Centennial. Here's Sid to give us a close look at the Centennial course registration process. You should have gotten a card in English and watched a video by our counselors. I'm here to give you Titans a quick recap in case you missed out. Your course card contains all the classes that you've signed up for next year. In case you choose a class doesn't fit you or you just don't want to take it anymore, simply mark through the class you've selected and put your new one right next to it. And Titans, remember, while filling these cards up, make sure you have all the FISD credits required to graduate. Otherwise, you might have to take classes over the summer or, in worst case, even get held back. On the back of your course card, there's a list of some of the courses that Centennial offers. To get a full and extensive list, be sure to go to the FISD course catalog. The course catalog will show every class offered, the prerequisites, and if there's any fee tied to that class. If you have any questions about the course catalog, be sure to email your counselors. Rising juniors and rising seniors now have the option to take early release and late arrival. In addition, there are a variety of options for dual credit at Collin College and UNT. FISD doesn't require rising juniors to take physics anymore. That means there are plenty of other third and fourth science options like AP Bio, AP Chemistry, AP Environmental Studies, and our brand new course, Aquatic Science. Aquatic Science is a study of roles of cycles, geology, fluid dynamics, and components of aquatic ecosystems. The required prerequisite for this class is biology, but it's also recommended to have taken chemistry. Speaking of new classes, Centennial now offers Mexican-American studies. In this course, students learn about the history and cultural contributions of Mexican-Americans and explore the history and culture from an interdisciplinary perspective. Another new course offered next year will be eSports 2. Esports 2 will build on the skills students learned in Esports 1. This course will allow students to focus on their area of interest within the esports industry. And don't forget that schedule cards are due on January 19th, so there's still time to change if you're still thinking about it. But after April 15th, there will be no changes allowed, unless it's for athletics, band, choir, orchestra, color guard, drill team, debate, or academic decathlon. These must be requested by the seventh school day of the year. You can find more information about classes on the FISD website and about course cards by emailing your counselor. This has been Sid Shaw for Sent10 News. Well, thanks, Sid. Do you know what time it is? I don't know, 12.34? No, it's time for some shameless self-promotion for our Centennial Broadcast Club, oh, dude. All right, Trent, tell us all about the Broadcast Club. The Broadcast Club is the place to learn about media editing, production, and all sorts of interesting skills. Today, we're going to be talking to their sponsor, the club president, and a few of their casual members to find out more details about the club. The goal for the broadcast club, I think, would just be to have a place for students to come and want to be creative. You know, with schoolwork, there's grades, there's expectations, there's rules and, and all these things. But with the club, you could just like kick back, relax, have fun with friends and create fun things. It has a lot of variety when it comes to this club. So you can come and showcase broadcast terminology, videography skills that you've created over the years, just any types of creative content. Really, I wanted a place that we could apply the school skills that we learn in broadcast and we learn in journalism for more creative influences. Instead of just making a bunch of news focused stories, we can focus on things that interest us more personally and things that we're passionate about. 
So broadcasting is very interesting, especially nowadays in today's world, because it's so much more than just getting a camera and interviewing someone. I mean, there's there's video content, there's writing content, there's social media, there's there's photography. There's so many ways you can capture broadcasting. You'll learn how to be in front of the camera. You'll learn how to edit videos. Um, you'll also learn just how to talk to people and socialize. So um, by doing all that, it's incorporated into the club, but also just a little more relaxed, less schoolwork. Meeting times are irregular. Our next one, I believe, is after the day the show is airing, January 13th. It's just after school, and we usually just meet for about an hour, and we just show what we have, and we just talk about it. So for those who are interested in joining the broadcast club, um, you can always email me. I'm hopperA at friscoisc.org. Um, we're always taking more people who just want to have a place to just come and relax away from the stress or anxiety they may be having every day and just have a chance to express themselves through content. Be sure to be on the lookout for the next meeting, Titans. This is Trent Nemel for Sen10 News. Wow, that actually looks pretty good and informative. Aren't you like the club treasurer? Well, in the next meeting, hopefully there won't be only eight people, because seven of them were the officers. Yeah, maybe. That'd be nice. Well, everyone, thanks for watching this special edition of Sen10 News. I'm Pranit. And I'm Brody. Keep it classy, Centennial. And we'll see you around.